Okay, now let's start talking about how to merge the show not tell with our um, thoughtful adjectives. So when we talked about thoughtful adjectives, we talked about our five senses, sight, sound, smell, touch, and taste. Those can give you an idea of how to use um, these adjectives to create a showing sentence. So when you think about the things that you can see, okay, let's look at our example. The room was filled with presents wrapped in papers of every color of the rainbow. Close your eyes and visualize. When you're writing a sentence and you want the reader to be able to understand what you're seeing, you can't just say, oh, there were packages in red, blue, orange, yellow, green. It loses a lot of the meaning because you're telling, you're not showing, you're not allowing them to create that image in their head. Same thing goes for your sound. Using some of your sound words like creak and bang and ooze. You know, those words that um, create a certain emotion or a certain feeling as you're reading them. You've read these words before in great books. Think about the BFG when he described the dreams and how the colors just tend to ooze and move around. Okay, and the difference between the colors in the nightmares versus the golden dreams. So you could, with before you even saw the movie, you could visualize these moving masses that were considered the dreams, all because of the way that they described the sight and even the sound of things like the way that the giants would move around. So our example on this page is the floor creaked as she walked over to her desk. Creak. The floor screamed as she walked over to her desk. It, it's a huge difference, okay? So just adding that one word is all we added to that sentence, but it changed the meaning and it gave it more depth to be able to hear that scene, okay? And then the smell. The air was filled with sweet and salty smells of cotton candy and popcorn. Okay, you know immediately if somebody talks about the smell of popcorn, all of us can smell that nice buttery popcorn smell, just hoping nobody has burnt the popcorn in the microwave. But even that can bring that, that horrible smell, but thinking about somebody burning the popcorn, it just it fills your whole day with that smell. But it's something you can visualize, even without it actually happening. It's something that you can almost taste on your tongue. It smells so strong. And then, of course, I'm going to skip to taste because I just said that. But, you know, the orange left a surprisingly sweet and bitter taste on my tongue. You know, it might not be orange. Some of you might not like oranges. But if you think about strawberries or grapes or anything with a strong flavor, even Skittles, when you have those flavors on your tongue, it's something, especially if it's something enjoyable to you, you can immediately connect to it. Okay, and then going back to touch, you know, the dog's fur felt like the prickles of a porcupine as I rubbed my hand down its back. Obviously, that is not like a very soft fur. It does have some softness to it, but it also has like a little bit of a, a, a tangy touch to it. If you want, like you have softness and all of a sudden there's like a little pinprick. I can visualize that. That's telling me that's kind of a wiry haired dog. And I've pet dogs like that and immediately brings me back to that moment. So that's what you're doing when you're being descriptive in your details. You're transporting your reader into that moment that you remember and remind them of a moment that they remember. So it is a connection between the writer and the reader. So that's why we really want you to give us showing sentences and using what you know about thoughtful adjectives and using the five sentences to create those showing sentences. All right, let's go to the next page. All right, we're gonna start on this page and go on to the next page in just a minute, but we're gonna practice this together. We're gonna to rewrite the story using more descriptive details. Think about how the characters felt as well as what they saw, smelled, and heard. We're gonna include dialogue to help describe the character's feelings. So here's our story. At the pizza place, Tony was getting a pizza ready for baking. He made the dough into a large ball and tossed it up. He spread some sauce on it, sprinkled it with cheese, and put it in the oven. Then the telephone rang. His wife answered it. When she hung up, she told him that the person from 
a factory just ordered a pizza and wants them delivered as fast as possible. Okay, nice story, but doesn't give us a lot of thoughtful details. You know, I have seen people toss pizza dough before, and when it said the part where it said he made the dough into a large ball and tossed it up, okay, did he miss? Sometimes I've seen him miss, and it makes a big mess. But, or if he got it smoothed out right, how big did he make it? There's a lot of questions, like what do I know about this pizza place? Was he making it at home? Well, no, it says pizza place. Well, who was he making it for? What do we know about Tony, who Tony is? What do I know about Tony's thoughts and feelings? What did Tony's wife actually say to him? What do I know about what is happening in the actions? There's a lot of missing details from this story. So let's see if we can fix this. Go to the next screen and we're gonna fix this. Okay, so here's our story again. And listen to the way we've changed a few things. Okay, first of all, let's talk about the pizza place. Now it's a busy pizza place. And Tony is our baker. So at the busy pizza place, Tony the baker was getting a pizza ready for baking. Okay, gives me a little bit more detail. He flattened out a ball of dough like a large pancake. That makes so much sense to me, okay? And tossed it up in the air. Okay, that made a lot more sense, didn't it? Now I can see the images I've seen on TV and in books and, and on magazines where these pizza bakers are flipping the pizza dough in the air. I can visualize that now. Then he hurriedly spread tomato sauce on it, sprinkled it with white cheese, and shoved it in the oven. That gives me a little bit more of a descriptive detail on how quickly he was working. Just then the telephone rang. A fellow from the factory wants a large pizza delivered and right away, Tony's wife called out. Okay, I've got one in the oven now, said Tony. Ah, so the pizza he was baking was just an extra, but now he's got a purpose to it. As he ran to wash the pizza sauce from his hands and grab a box. See, that makes it a little bit more of an in-depth story that gives us a little bit more of what's going on. All right, let's go to the next page and talk about today's assignment. All right, so now today's assignment. You are going to take this story and I want you to include dialogue and help describe the character's feelings. Think about the things that they smelled, the things that they heard, the things that they saw. Think about those five sentences. Think about your thoughtful adjectives and give me showing sentences, not telling sentences. So here's your story. The puppy got out of its box and came into the kitchen where we were eating. My sister and I started to eat our food so fast, some fell off our plates. We were in a hurry to play with the dog and we both wanted to be first. Mama was busy working at the sink. When Mama heard the commotion, she turned around and told us to slow down and eat our food. She threatened to not let us play with the puppy at all. All right, so I can't wait to see these great stories you guys come up with about how this brother and sister, or two sisters, um, speed through their lunch in order to play with their puppy. And then again, I wonder what happens to the puppy. All right, bye guys.